G'day guys, um, this is a video on uh, certain symptoms that people may have if they've got like anemia. So they may have cravings for citric acid, they may have cravings for, you know, things like lemons and bitter things, um, they may be things like um, sour type flavours that sort of stuff so if somebody was to have that it's less likely on a carnival diet to have those symptoms but there could be other family members that have those symptoms that are not on a carnival diet or it could be also people that may be doing like therapeutic um, type approaches where they're doing far too much fat and not enough protein so they're not getting enough iron and they may be having these symptoms like cravings and all that, and sometimes people think, uh, you know, and they take a, some carbohydrates, you know, like that salad boy guy, yes, you know, Mr. Saladino, so, and they may end up, oh, I just pushed up my insulin quite a bit. Mm, I seem to feel a bit better. But you're only masking the symptoms under those circ sort of circumstances. You're still going to be, not feeling optimal, but you're masking the craving for lemons and citric acid or and bitter things, sour things. So that's all you're doing. So let me just share my screen. So this is um, from the Journal of um, the American Journal of Medicine. Uh, this is an old uh, bit of an old study, it goes back a few years. And so pretty much a case study, craving lemons, another, another form of pica in iron deficiency. So pretty much 45 year old woman with a, um, a history that had gastric bypass surgery and heavy menstrual cycles. Um, and pretty much presented with complaints of fatigue. Um, so we'll go down here a bit. Uh, she was given two units of packed red blood cells and started on oral iron supplement, which caused severe constipation. Uh, the patient had an unusual craving for lemons. She was eating four to five lemons a day, including the peel for about three months, spending more than $100 a month just for lemons. Uh, one gram of vitravenous um, iron dextrin was administrated as a total dose infusion over four hours. And, and after a test dose, she tolerated it well. And interestingly, Pika for lemon resolved two days after the infusion. Uh, hemoglobin levels also increased to normal after the infusion. Clinicians should be aware of this unusual manifestation, which may be a may be a clue for the diagnosis of iron deficiency. So this is obviously the clinical communication um, through this magazine to the medical profession. So there is this issue where people have these unusual sour citric type cravings which are due to iron deficient anemia so when we're looking at you know iron this is the national institute of health website so when we're looking at the numbers we're looking at you know menst menstruating women 18 milligrams for men at any um, usually about eight milligrams. Obviously, for younger children, it can, males at different stages of life, it can be much higher. As you can see, a child actually requires far more compared to the adult. Got it. So postmenopausal, it's higher, and. That's pregnancy, which is about compared to the female to women's non when they're menstruating, it's about you know fifty percent more 
at 27 milligrams. And this lactation thing, I think, is actually wrong. Um, yes, obviously, you're not menstruating through that period of that early part of lactation, but I also think that you're not taking this into consideration. And if you combine this with that, or even eight, you know, but if you combine this about 20, it's still more um, than this amount. So I would I would think if I'm if somebody's pregnant, target this and target this also at the time of uh, um, lactation as well, which is 50% more in that regard. So for you carny women, we'll forget about the fortified stuff, which is crap. Um, doesn't have the same ionic structure. So yes, it can be a problem being converted and stored properly, but that's for another day to go into that. Now, iron from beef. So this is just a sort of a generalized beef skirt, which is sort of a generalized number. When we're looking at this, remember this comes up. So looking at that number, so four for men, it's quite easy to get with probably about five, you know, so we're going to eight divided by 9.3. That's adult men for younger men required a bit more in their teenage years, as you saw the number, which was 11. So if we're looking at that times six, we're looking at five point, nearly 5.2 ounces and times that is 28.33 is about 146 plus um, grams in the metric system. So if we were looking at somebody who is female, so 18 divided by 9.3 times six ounces, we're looking at about 11.6 um, ounces and 1.5 times about 17.4 ounces so that's one pound 16 ounces is one pound one pound um 1.4 um plus ounces so so slightly over a pound um for a pregnant woman so let me we divide that back again for a regular woman and that 28.3333333 and that would be about 329 from menstruating women um premenopausal would be 329 grams sorry yeah grams which is 11.6 ounces so 3 let's say 330 grams. And for a pregnant woman, that would be 493 and a half. So let's say about half a kilo um, to get the, the amount of iron you need. Now, right at the bottom of this, they do have, she does have this nutritional tool, which is really good. It's a, good, it's a fantastic tool. And it covers a whole lot of different, you know, macros, minerals, vitamins, um, amino acids, fatty acids, or whatever. So you can actually search all those to see it with different foods. Um, I'm surprised because this, she's an American. This is an American, so why she doesn't have um, ounces or anything like that. But anyway, she does have it on her main page, but uh, for some reason it's not. Maybe it's a database she's using. I'm not sure. So 100 grams, which 100 grams, just to remind everyone in the not non-metric world, you Philistines. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> got to get it right. 28 point. That is 3.53 ounces. So 3.53 ounces is the amount shown when we select 100 grams. That's what we're talking about in ounces, 3.53. Just keep that in mind. Use the common ones. You can use some of the standard ones as well and add additional stuff. 
Uh, I don't bother with the brand of stuff because this is all the these are all like processed stuff. We we stick to real food, so you can pick um, different sources. Obviously, that's for the lagoons. But anyway, they're not going to get they get they're not going to get the right information because obviously plants are chelated by oxalates and things like that, like in the spinach. So I don't we don't believe that those are good sources. But yeah, you can go through it all these and it'll actually go through like, you know, different sausages types, um, different steak cuts. And this is really important because you've got here like ribeye, you've got tenderloin, you've got grilled T-bone, um, sirloin. You've got different cuts of meat, chunk, um, you know, grilled top steak. So there's different types and you can go through and look at the different amounts that are in different cuts of meat for that quantity. And that is for 100 grams or 3.53 ounces. Now you can understand how very easily somebody can on a non, on a, even a sad diet that could potentially become deficient. You know, if they're only doing like nowadays, people are doing like uh, encouraged to do less than 100 grams of uh, or around about that. And if you're not, if you're only doing that, you may not be getting enough, especially if you're a a woman that requires slightly more, an adult woman or a pregnant woman. So if you're having cravings for, um, you know, lemons and citric things and sour things, yes, that, that may be due to an iron um, deficiency or even anemia, depending on what age and how, how long you've been sort of neglecting to eat certain foods. So obviously there's, you know, seafood as well. Seafood is pretty good. Octopus also good for um, uh, for cholesterol. So, and it does have, you can actually, even in the actual tool here, you can pick cholesterol, rich foods, which can be important if you're trying to heal yourself. So healing purposes, you may want to maximize things very high because cholesterol is required when you're healing from any health condition. So you can look through here, you can look at different sort of things like crustaceans, like mussels, pretty good. They have, they don't have excessive amounts, but they have a very good profile of a lot of different minerals, the, these sort of uh, crustaceans. The issue is some people can react to them. But keep that in mind. I mean, that mussels are quite nice. I occasionally have mussels. I don't like them just at, like just water and soup like that doesn't really do it for me i tend to they find them very bland and not really tasty so i tend to basically use butter and cream to give them some flavor and i may use a bit um, of rosemary and a bit of uh, salt and pepper to basically spice them up a bit so it's up to people how they want to do that some people just are fine with the creamy taste and some and some uh, salt if that works for you not a problem uh dairy and eggs obviously now a lot of that remember you got to remember that are uh, you a good converter of non-heme iron so remember eggs and dairy tend to be non-heme iron so that can be an issue so just keep that in mind so pretty much if you're having any of those symptoms um where you are ravenous about sour or bitter things or citrusy type things, then you may have um, a non-diagnosed um, anemia um, issue or de iron deficiency issue. So you know, it's extremely rare on a carnival diet, but it's not unheard of, especially for me for women, which may be under eating meat, or men and women that are doing these sort of strange therapeutic sort of things where they're reading only a very 10% protein and 90% for certain, you know, therapeutic purposes. And they may be under eating um, uh, meat and as a consequence, uh, taking in insufficient um, iron and over time that becomes a problem. So keep that in mind. Um, these symptoms are more going to be um, more, more noticed and, in the general community, in the you know, um, in the vegan community, in the vegetarian community, 
and on people on sad, sad diets. If you do notice these symptoms, well, tell them you're, you may need to supplement some meat, my dear fellow or dear lady. So, yes, that's pretty much it. Um, that also could have been a friend who masked his, Mr. Saladino, who masked his sort of uh, um, issues with raising his insulin so he would retain on some of those minerals a bit better. Um, but that really just masked the symptoms, didn't resolve the issue. So who knows? There's a, a lot of symptoms that he was claiming that could have been related to that as well, under eating protein plus electrolyte mismanagement and stuff like that. So all these things can have their effect. Um, lack of, you know, when you eat enough meat, you should, um, if you're healthy and you don't, you know, you're not oxalate dumping, you're not doing anything, you should be getting enough. If you're eating enough meat, enough taurine. Um, you know, my key focus is on when it comes to supplementing taurine is really for therapeutic purposes or fixing mitochondrial damage like myself over time or fibrosis that I had so it has therapeutic purposes but if you're healthy and young you know you're going to get enough from the animal foods themselves even cooked um, obviously if uh, you are unhealthy and have got issues obviously you will notice but that's a different issue I've discussed that before many times um, but if you do have any of these symptoms um, of uh, cravings unusual soury cravings yes you may have an iron issue so either do get you checked yourself checked out or even easier save yourself some money eat more meat and if it corrects it you know exactly what the cause was anyway that's about it see you